This NBA playoff picks edition of the Sports Gambling Podcast is presented by WinBet. Get started today and you'll get a risk free bet up to $500. Terms and conditions apply. Get the details at WYNNBet.com and download the app today. We're also brought to you by PropSwap. America's number one app to buy and sell sports bets. Use promo code SGP on your first deposit and receive up to $500 in bonus cash. That's PropSwap.com, promo code SGP. We're also brought to you by Roman. Roman is a straightforward way to take care of ED. Just go to getroman.com slash SGP to get $15 off your first month of treatment. That's getroman.com slash SGP. We're also brought to you by the SGPN app. The SGPN app gives you easy access to all of our picks, podcasts, and it's the exclusive place to enter all our contests, including our thousand dollar NBA Finals free roll. Just enter SGPN in the App Store or Google Play Store. Ooh. Podcast. I'm Sean stacking the money green with my partner in picks, Ryan. Real money Kramer. What's happening, Kramer Dog? Oh, just just crushing it right now. Just crushing life, crushing the NBA, <laughs> crushing uh, everything. Just NBA got, got sharp, some, got Brian Kramer. Well, I didn't want to bring it up because you know I'm a humble man. But Sean, these adjusted pro, these adjusted spreads I <laughs> you give have, out. You have been adjusted spread god. It's and been then, it's been pretty fire. And then what did we talk about? That adjusted total. We went high and low, and it that came in on the high over. That yeah, was a Sixers four to Hawks. One. You also threw out uh, Hawks Sixers, where Hawks win the first game, and then Sixers win series plus three sixty. That's looking great with the Sixers at minus one twenty right now. The adjusted series price minus one twenty. We are of course we're doing this a podcast. On location uh, from uh, Dallas, we're out here for the FSGA Fantasy Sports and Gaming Association Conference. Long day of uh, hobnob and Ryan drinking a ton of cocktails, eating a bunch of food, which doesn't sound like hard work, but the, it, the it, it, it'll eventually catch up to you. Listen, we're, in, we're in the wee hours, cranking out some content. I've had to eat meals from a restaurant now for almost two straight days, alcohol, uh, two nights in a row, Sean, Ryan putting down a uh, hard lemonade seltzers. I was shocked. I Ta- was talking to straight, by the way, shout out to the, uh, the hard lemonade seltzer. I was slamming <laughs> those things were going down like water. Oh yeah. And of course I got out. It, it was pouring down rain. <laughs> Ryan and they were remodeling the fitness center. That did not stop me from getting my run in. I'm out there. I'm running around the Cowboys training facility, and I'm the only one within two square miles getting a real workout because there is no off season for SGPN and for my running career. Can't say the same about the Cowboys, but we're here to talk national basketball, aka the association. You want to get down on some action? Some of Ryan's adjusted spreads, some of his picks. I've been uh, doing pretty well overall. Tweeted out a couple losers. Ignore those. Just take my winners and head over to winbet.com. W Y N N bet.com. Download that app. Get up to a $500 risk free bet. Again, risk free. Can't stress this enough. Ah, perfect time to get in. So many states uh, already in the WinBet family. More added every day. Generous promos, odds, and parlays are happening right now over at WinBet. It's got Win right in the name. What more do you want? W Y N N Bet dot com. Download the app today. Kramer, we can are you, real quick. I don't mean to interrupt you, sure, because you have important news to get to. But can you be a real man of DGen two times in a row, going <laughs> running in the rain? Look at you, just dealing with the elements like a real man. Not not slowing down. I will say it's gross around here because obviously it rains in Texas from time to time, and they've they've made their sidewalks out of that like glossy, slippery material, similar oh, yeah. to like Hollywood Boulevard, where when oh. it rains. Just wait till the drunk people start trying to walk on that shit. And oh. God forbid heels are involved. I mean, not that that's our problem, Sean. No, I ran in running sneakers, no, no not slippage. heels. Uh, you know, I, I don't have the I don't have the arches for heels. This guy <laughs> calling into the podcast. He is one of the hosts, a co-host of the NBA Gambling Podcast, and he does some fantasy uh, analysis as well for us over at sportsgamblingpodcast.com. AKA sports gambling podcast.com through the, the in there, the man, the myth, the legend, Dan Titus, Dan, what's happening, man. Uh-huh. <laughs> 
<laughs> oh, don't worry. I don't need any help drinking the hard lemonade seltzer. <laughs> and I do, I do keep uh yeah. It's, I mean, again, the Cowboys propaganda is, is just so strong here everywhere you go. It's, it's star burger and concrete Cowboys and ca- for a team that hasn't won a championship in 26 years, you would have no idea. You would think it was like last championship year. drive. I, I mean, they, the Cowboys fans make fun of the Eagles fans for having the, the Philly special statue. They have a, they have a goddamn complex built out here and they haven't won a playoff Okay, one playoff game in 30 years. Literally one of the the streets that goes through the main uh like area, this practice facility, corporate center area is called Winning. <laughs> it, it, winning <laughs> Drive, Winning Avenue, like Winning Way. None yeah. of those things are appropriate. We saw this beautiful a uh, window with all the all these keywords and and <laughs> players and moments from Cowboys past. Nothing started with two. Nothing <laughs> happened this millennium. Nothing <laughs> happened past two thousand. I mean, come on, guys. The majority of the pe- <laughs> yeah, he's he's got kids. He's dealing with uh, a broken pipe. He's you know he's he's a real man <laughs> these days. All right, not, not the Roman pipe. That one's good. <laughs> No, well done, hey. <laughs> and welcome to the family, Dan. Dan, our cro- two two uh, two great things well, there. You crowbar in a sponsor mention off script and a uh, you know and a sex joke. That's why they call him Dan Lead Pipe Lock <laughs> Titus. <laughs> All right, Dan, let's get real. It's unfortunate the Sixers. What a weird ass game where they're just coming out cold. The, the Hawks are just shooting the lights out. Boat racing the Sixers at home, where the Sixers have been great at home for the majority of the season, and then they almost have this miraculous comeback. They end up losing by four points, kind of crazy, uh, all things considered. I- I'm still going insane that Ben Simmons, thirteen to thirty-eight from the free throw line in the playoffs, makes no sense. I really blame Doc, who who has had a good season coaching, but there was some substitution stuff he was doing. You know, not having and Embiid and Simmons out there for long stretches of time, even when they were down 15. Uh, I mean, it got up to like 24 points. So I, I, I don't know. Are, are you excited in a weird way that like, Hey, you know, Embiid put up a uh, what? 39 and nine on that, on that knee. That's a good sign. Uh, they, they came all the way back. They showed some fight or are you uh, scared, nervous, depressed because they got their ass kicked at home? They got their ass handed to him, man. Um, I think you brought up a lot of good points, though, because the thing that I'm questioning most is like, why is Doc Rivers giving these teachy moments in the playoffs? Like, I don't like these rotations. You, you you nailed it on the head. There's no reason that Ben and Joel Joel need to be off the floor at the same time. You have to have those scores on there. They just got down too quickly. I mean, I think the one thing I I, I see that the silver lining in this is that cool. If Vegas thinks that, you know, the Sixers improve those odds to win the, to win the series. I, I like, I, I went to FanDuel, grab that at minus minus one twenty. I still think that they're going to be in a good place to w- finish out the series, assuming that NB can stay healthy. But overall, like I feel all right about it. I just think it was a bad first game and props to, to Atlanta. They play great. Trey young still can't be stopped. So I'm very curious to see how, how doc rivers uh, decides to, to, match up against him and throw out different looks because this team has tons of defenders to throw at him. But Danny green was not the answer that dude was non-existent in game one. I'm expecting him to play better, but overall doc's got to shaping up those, those rotations and let's get the guys, the rock. And then at the end of the game, man, Ben Simmons just can't be on the floor right now. Oh, he, he's proven he can't be trusted. Like he can't shoot free throws. So if you can't shoot free throws, you're useless to me in the crunch time. And, and it's so annoying because he's he uh, he's obviously so good in other aspects of the game, and he should be so one of the guys that they're they're putting on Trey Young. Make him work for it. Yep. And and again yep. on the other end, let's go after Trey Young. Let's try and 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 get some fouls on Trey Young early. Maybe just to you know limit his minutes. Like the kid is just shooting, you know, from make like, him tired. Yeah, do whatever like you make can. Make him play defense a little. Exactly. Bit. 
go add him because that at least, you know, he may wear his legs out a little bit or get in some foul trouble. To, like, you know, doc, make uh, him work. For he it. could use some defensive help. Tibbs is available right now. Not, not coaching <laughs> anywhere. And uh, by the way, Sean, I, 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 w- I think, you know, maybe a doc is just a friend of the Kramer gang and, and saw that in- immense value in plus three sixty for the Hawks to win game one and the Sixers to win the series. <laughs> My only concern now is this Atlanta revelation and the fact that you guys are clearly Sean, you're having to deal with the curse of your disrespect for Dwight Howard. That's what this Ben Simmons <laughs> thing is. You're having to root for another physical for or sorry, a physical specimen who can't shoot a free throw and has seemingly no uh, or missing offensive abilities when it doesn't make any sense. Well, at, at least He's Dwight freakish. Well, Dwight, at least Dwight Howard. What? Well, at least Dwight Howard, when he shot free throws, I somewhat understood. I didn't understand how he never developed any sort of offensive game, but at least None. he's like super tall or something like, I, I don't know, a, a guard at Ben Simmons height. Like it's just the perfect, he should be dominating at free throws. It's it, I, I, every time I watch him, it makes no fucking sense. I'm, I'm losing my mind on it. That's this is the next uh, evolution in the player empowerment era. <laughs> I don't have to shoot free throws. Hey, let's Who make are him, you to tell uh, me I should have to shoot free throws? They're just going to get rid of the free throw and put it at like the first spot and around around the world. <laughs> well, we uh, we the players we uh, you know it's mental health awareness and getting booed for missing free throws. <laughs> also, it's just really tough mentally to deal with free throws. I'm opting out of free throws because it's not good for my mental health. I I mean we're not that far from that. Sitting out until they get rid of the free throw. <laughs> not to sound like. The, uh, the shout out to the French Open, the the, the cold, uh, the the old man on the lawn. But I, I mean, dude, come on, get some mental toughness. You know what? I think we need to we need to really lean into old man on the lawn. Come football <laughs> season, there's not enough old man on the lawn out there. Uh, game two, though, Hawks catching five points still, one seventy five on the money line. Sixers minus two ten on the money line. Total sitting at two twenty three. I'll go out on the limb. I'll say Sixers minus five. I'm doing it. I've I've been I've picked them. I think every time we've done a podcast, and they've been pretty good against the spread. NBA Sean over here. Can, can you tell me if you're going to lock them up though? No, that's well. They they were actually doing pretty good against the lock with the exception of last episode. So I don't probably not going to put the kibosh on them. I'm going to get off them a little bit lock wise. But this is a must win game at home, and I think this. Feels to me in the same way that uh, the Hawks stole game one against the Knicks and then game two, the Knicks won and covered. I, I think there's a similar situation here for the Sixers. Great bounce back opportunity. Dan, are you with me or are you going to go against the Sixers and take the Hawks here? Yeah, man. Last time I was on the show, I was riding with you. This time I'm taking the Hawks. Ooh. I'm taking them plus five, but I got the Sixers getting the money line. I just think that this game is going to be closer. Um, just the way that the Hawks looked and the way they matched up, they played lights out. I, I'm thinking it's going to be somewhat similar. This is going to be a dog fight. It's going to take the Sixers at least six or seven games to get this done. But I think that they could at least get steal game two, get the, get a win at home, and then take it to ATL for game three, and then reset and hopefully regain the series. Just get one of those uh, two in in Atlanta, even it up to two, and and then I like. Two out of three with the uh, with the home court advantage. Dan, any sort of uh, I know you do a ton of DFS player props. You're uh, you guys are uh, dominating in the. I, I see all the picks coming out of the slack. I heard your parlay and some player props. Anything uh, jump out at you, player prop wise, DFS for this game? Yeah, so man, I'm gonna go with. I, I gotta go with Joel Embiid or, or Trey Young here. Um, it's just too, they're just too good. And um, let me try to pull up the, the Joel and B point. So 29 and a half to me, I think that this is going to be the statement game for him. Um, he had 39 points last game or over 30 points last game, did it pretty much in three quarters. Um, I see no reason that, that he can't be stopped. I mean, Clint Capella really can't check him. The offense is going to throw flow through him. If the Sixers want to play this right and actually remain competitive and not have to m- mount a crazy comeback in the fourth quarter that the Atlanta Hawks is pretty much let up. So I'm going to take Joel and beat over 29 and a half points. Love it. And, and I think I, I wouldn't, 
you know, this, this Atlanta Hawks team seems to, and I don't, I'm not looking at the advanced numbers, but they seem to really enjoy and respond to pace. If I'm the Sixers, I would try and slow things down. Cause I think their half court offense with Embiid in the paint, not chucking up threes is really tough to guard and, and tough to match up. So maybe there, maybe you just limit the possessions of the Hawks as a way to slow down the Trey young and the scoring. Cause a lot of those threes was him like running out and, you know, chucking these really deep deep shots. So I think maybe if you slow it down, that could help Kramer. Where are you at with a play on this game? This is come on as this, the, or what is it like the sand through the hourglass as the league? This turns. is the, these are the days of the NBA playoffs. Look, uh, come on. We're going to go right to the adjusted spread in this game. We're going to push it up to the two to one point. Like I have been Ooh. the entire playoffs. We're going to take the Sixers minus 11. Yes. What, Classic Atlanta comes out hot. Yeah. What did you say? How how was this a four point game? You could maybe the game wasn't as closer as it really ended. Whatever. Atlanta had a great first half, and that was the story of this game. And when you're talking about the playoffs, especially with a team like the 76ers here, they're gonna stand up, they're gonna play tall, and Atlanta already did their job, right? They don't have to scrap to the end in this one. Now, if you are gonna play Atlanta, why not play Atlanta minus two plus two hundred? Uh, again, play with these adjusted numbers because I get this feels like one of these series, Sean. You're going to see a lot of blowouts, and I think Atlanta doing their job in Game One, they now can kind of recharge the batteries for the home stand. I think they they get blown out in this one. Maybe maybe even if you really want to be a Gen, take sixteen and a half, Sixers minus Hashtag sixteen and a half only. at four to one. Yeah, because I mean, if if the Sixers get up wow. big, why? What is in what is in it for the Hawks to get up for that mm-hmm. second half? It's going to be. I mean, it, it feels like it's just easy to pack it in. Innovative NBA gambling over here, just going full adjusted spreads. <laughs> full adjusted spreads. Well, the Sixers, they came up short. Ryan came up short in Game One, and uh, you know, if you're coming up short in the bedroom. Much worse than uh, if you're coming up short in gambling. Don't worry, just keep going. You can figure it out. If you're coming up short in the bedroom, there could be an issue. Could be a legitimate health issue. Whatever it is, you got to get it looked at. Roman makes that so easy. All you got to do go to getroman.com/sgp. Free virtual online evaluation doesn't get any better than that. U.S. licensed healthcare professional. That's what you want out of a healthcare professional. Someone uh, examining you for bedroom problems. You want a licensed healthcare professional. Just don't, uh, you know, talk to your buddy at the gym. Actually, talk to someone. Do yourself a favor, and there's a chance. Hopefully not, but there's a chance. Again, they say, uh, you know, the penis is the dipstick to the body. So if that thing's not working, something else could be wrong. You got to get it checked out. Just go to getroman.com slash S G P could be a blood flow issue. You want your, you got to get that thing looked at, uh, do yourself a favor, your partner, a favor, get Roman.com slash S G P. And again, if medication right for you, $15 off your first month savings and your erection working doesn't get any better than that. Two things I love, Ryan, a working erection and savings. Get Roman.com slash S G P tell, tell the wife all the time. Have no fucking clue about pipes. That's why we call a plumber. Well, I don't, hopefully that's uh, hopefully that's not a metaphor, but again, Ryan, we talk about this all the time. My, my, my human pipe, my flesh pipes are working just fine. Thank you for asking, but uh, get Roman. I mean, if you do need that kind of help, you can't lie. You, you go can, to a professional, you licensed can, professional. You can lie about losing a bunch of money in Vegas, <laughs> but you can't lie if your dick doesn't work. No, they know. They know when that's not working. Uh, all right, I what love, do we got? I love this show and I love my fucking I job. Love this fucking show and I love fucking Betty. Clippers, Jazz, Clippers, pull it out. Game seven, get the cover first. First home win of the series. She, we can't go the rest of the playoff shot. No, we're gonna we're gonna put the cooler on the Clippers. Well, and honestly, I don't want to go until they get food service in the suite. I know that sounds like a very privileged statement, but co- it was a nightmare. Anyway, no one cares about that. They we care had to go about all the way to the main concourse, <laughs> all the way down to the main concourse in a pandemic. Utah Jazz at home, game one after a little bit of a layoff for the Jazz, lane three and a half, minus one fifty on the money line. Clippers plus one thirty coming back the other way. Total sitting at two twenty. Kramer, am I looking at this right? Are the Jazz are, are the Clippers 
favorite on the series price because I thought they were a plus one thirty dog. Oh, I flipped it. I'm okay, sorry. yeah. So Clippers are a plus one thirty dog on the series. Jazz minus. Uh, no, you had it's oh, plus one hundred five and okay. minus one thirty. So it's plus one hundred five for the Clippers because I I got a little wager on the Clippers at plus one thirty. Looks like it's moved as some Clippers action is coming in. Game one, of course, like I said, Who's minus three and a half. Jazz? I don't know what's what would excite you about this Jazz team, about Utah basketball in general. I'm a little skeptical. It does feel like there's still some weird wonkiness between uh, Mitchell and the Jazz. They kind of let the Grizzlies hang around more than they should. But really, to me, it's just Kawhi right now. I, I mean, who is playing a more complete game than Kawhi right now? I I, I just don't see it. I, I think he's kind of the best player in the NBA right now playing two ways. Uh, he's putting up like 40 points in the playoff and playing, uh, you know, I mean, really that, that series, once they put him on Luca a little bit to slow Luca down, uh, that was huge. So I think this Clippers team, whatever it was that they started off to that really slow start and they still let you know, the, the, um, the Mavs get that, uh, that game six, but I, or sorry, game five. And then, and then won the last two, I think they figured something out in between those, you know, they basically closed it out four one. So I think they figured something out. Clippers are coming in. Yeah. winning four out of five. They haven't lost a road playoff game and their dogs here. I'm going Clippers plus three and a half. Maybe it's, maybe it's chalky, but I, and we saw it a little bit with the uh, Suns here, and maybe the maybe the play is just Clippers first half because maybe they are gas from the seven game series. They come out hot, but I'll take them for the game at plus three and a half. Dan, where are you at? Clippers Jazz here. So this series, man, I'm, I'm with y'all. You, you mentioned that you you don't understand like what's the hype around Utah Jazz. I mean, I, I'd question what's the hype around Utah in general. Yes, I mean the best thing that happened to them was Dwayne Wade coming over there and buying them out and hopefully changing that culture. <laughs> but anyway, um, I don't believe in the Jazz. I think that this is going to be the Clippers series to lose. Um, I like it that you got it at uh, what you get it um, uh, plus one thirty. That plus one thirty really solid series for us. Yep. Plus, yeah. And I was trying to get it at, I was, I was looking at their, um, the series correct score. I was thinking maybe the Clippers could do this in six games, but you know, to be conservative, I'll take it at four, uh, take it in game seven plus 500, not too bad. Ooh, so nice. um, I think ultimately it's going to, it's going to be about the best players on the court. To your point, Kawhi Leonard is clearly the best player on the court. Mike Conley is going to be hobbled. He retweets his hamstring. So he's questionable coming yeah, to game point. one. We've already seen it with Memphis. They fought them, you know, to the to the end, man. They made John Morant look like an all-star, um, superstar, I should say. And right now it's gonna come down to veteran leadership, man. And I think Paul George, even though he didn't have a good game, game seven, I think he's gonna come about like he plays well against the Utah Jazz. And the Jazz took two out of three in the uh, regular season, but in the first game, the uh, Kawhi and, and, and uh, Paul George didn't even play. So I, I held that with a grain of salt. I think you're going to see the best version of the Clippers against the Utah Jazz, and they're going to upset them. What wasn't that like in hindsight? Wasn't this Dallas matchup just kind of an interest, like a tough, like just maybe a really tough matchup for the Clippers in a strange way? And yeah. they're, they're not going to yeah. see that again. And in this Clippers team, again, like I, I don't know if, if you listen to the podcast, Sean, but I pick them. I picked them to win the championship. Yes, I was there. I still have them. To win the I, championship, I did as well. I did and as well. A nice yep. pick, Dan. Again, <laughs> great. Ta- other than the fact that you're an Eagle fan, you, a lot of great taste, a lot of great things coming. Out. But Clippers minus. I, I like your angle with them to win in in six. But I, I I could see this being a shorter series as well. I'm gonna take the Clippers minus one and a half. Ooh, it's not the price. You know, D- Dan, he he's got me with that price, but I I plus one seventy five on the minus one and a half. I feel pretty good about. I think they probably don't take care of business in game one, but they're gonna get one of the two, and then I think they 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 go to work. And again, li- like you said, when they deploy when they de- when they deploy Kawhi correctly. And the game we were at, Sean, they did not do no. that. He was not defending Luca at all. Also, potentially huge onions play to just kind of save that for the end and be like, yeah. Yeah, all right, now we're going to take it seriously. Yeah, a little, what? a little like white knuckling. Like, really, you guys are going to wait to load management, bro. So anyway, coming back to it, I think just Clippers. 
Uh, Clippers roll here. I, I uh, maybe I'm blindsided, but we were talking about how it seemed like there might be a small fracture in Utah, and there was not enough pressure yep. applied by Memphis for that crack to get any larger. This is a much different animal. And honestly, we were discussing this early, Sean. Every single team in these playoffs seems to be flawed in a different way. And if, if you're asking me, gun to my head, to bet on a guy or even a couple guys. I, it's still Paul George and Kawhi Leonard. Yeah, no, it really is. And and, uh, and one of the Morrises out there just being a you know being a bully. I, I, the team has what goon. it takes. You, you got to have a yeah. goon, and they have the goons. Like their whole squad is practically. I mean, they traded up pretty much Trez, and then they got Marcus Morris. Like, I mean, I feel like that that team when you pick up Rondo, they're built for the for the playoffs. And like, I just feel like Utah, like it's Rudy Gobert. He's super soft, and like, I get, I don't know, man. Like, I just don't, nah. I don't believe in it. Bogdanovich, great shooter, but like, come on, he's going to get locked down. It's just not going to be good yeah. for Utah. Well, and, and the head coaching too. Like I, I know Tyron Lou is easy to dismiss, but I think, and, and Dan, maybe you're on board with this analogy, but to me, he's got Doug Peterson vibes where he's just like a former player, not a star, but all the players seem to like him. And yep. you know, when they had their backs against the wall, that's when he's like, all right, guys, you know, maybe not like the best play caller, the tactician, but they, the players do seem to respond to Ty Lu, And he, he, he kind of has enough when he's put into a tough situation. I think he's, he's certainly not like a brilliant coaching mind, but he kind of has that intangible aspect that Doug P even, you know, some of the, like eight, 2018, 2019, uh, where they ended up getting into the playoffs both those years and probably didn't really deserve to get in the Eagles. I, I think. Where, where are you going with? We're talking I'm about the NBA. The Ty yeah. Lue, How are you getting Doug Peterson? Ty Lue and Doug Peterson. There's similar comparison. Uh, Jake Paquin in the chat saying he's grabbing uh, uh, Paul George over points, four straight unders. Mm. He's due. I like yeah, it. I, I, like I think. I, like I think it. a game one. Um, Paul George comes out swinging. I, I wouldn't be surprised, and I, and I don't know what the price is, but it's probably like low to mid twenties, and and I like the over there. But uh, last thing I'll say: Utah sure. Jazz win Game One, Clippers win series mm. four to one. Okay, I, I'm going, but I'm going Clippers plus three and a half for Game One. It sounds like uh, Dan and Kramer, you guys are on there as well, right? I, I'm take. Did you not yes, just sir. hear that that bet? Utah wins game one. Well, oh wait, sorry. You, you got, so you're taking Utah money line. I'm, at, I'm putting my, I'm painting a very specific <laughs> plan for this series. Okay. Utah wins game one. Give me your very specific bet for this game. Is it Utah, Utah minus, minus three, and, three a half? and a half? Okay. You're crazy. They're going to come out flat as shit, Ryan. They're not used to the elevation. <laughs> no, obviously Utah is, but uh, I, I, I just think this is I think the Clippers team is did just you, dialed in. I told you the Sixers were going to lose game one and you then did. win the series plus three sixty. That's plus why you're four hundred on the Clippers when they rattle off those four in a row. They're just tired, man. That was a long series. The, Ryan, you are the Oracle. Uh, before we get to the uh, this next game here and the series, Nuggets, Suns. Of course, the Nuggets now down one zero in the series. But a perfect time to talk about Prop Swap. Of course, head over to PropSwap.com, America's number one app to buy and sell sports bets. Kramer, you are sitting on a Nuggets future for oh. them to win the West. What are you doing with that ticket now? Are you looking ripping to sell? I'm looking to rip it up. <laughs> you can't oh, rip it up. Gross. <laughs> I, I was so I was, we're on Prop Swap again. You know, Prop Swap is all about uh, buying uh, buying low, selling high let, with the value. Yes. I, I haggling with this guy. He's offering a Denver to win the championship at eight to one. Well, and that's and quick sidebar. Uh, I think that's one of the newer features to Prop Swap from uh, when oh. when they ran with us last. Is that again? If you don't like the price, uh, you can also bid uh, yeah. a, like a lower price and try and negotiate. So maybe someone offers, or also on the other end, if you want to offer a price that's not amazing and hope someone takes takes a nibble on it, uh, feel free. It's an open marketplace. That's why I got to love Prop Swap. Yeah, so he's offered a bad price, do a little haggling, end up getting the ticket at nine to one or nine 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 and change to one. Uh, felt like a fun position to have. Uh, you know, Ryan McKee can't have too many nice th things. So rich fat baby, I didn't I didn't think the Suns were going to get another one. Uh, and now now it's just it's cooked. Yeah, it's, I, I, boy. I, 
And Chris Paul, wow. Anyway. Chris Paul's looked amazing. Again, use promo code SGP on your first deposit. Receive up to five hundred dollars in bonus cash. Go to PropSwap.com. Download the PropSwap app today. Again, available in many states. So, if you if you don't have access to the futures market wherever you are, this is a great opportunity to get access to it. And uh, maybe you can have an opportunity to buy my Sixers championship ticket. I'm actually going to hang on to it. So Probably I'm not going to sell. Brought me back to my eBay days. I'm a hod- I'm a hodler when it comes to uh, my prop swap tickets. But you can, if you are looking to play the market instead of the stock market, just play the prop swap market. I, I'm going to list my. I need to list my ticket immediately. I think <laughs> unload it. Just liquidate. Nuggets. They're catching five against the Phoenix Suns. Uh, game two is uh, Wednesday so this is, the eighth. This this was there's there was no number when we when I whipped up the sheet. I just grabbed what okay. the line for this to tonight's game was. So we're we're predicting guesstimating predicting Suns minus five minus two oh five uh, one sixty five for the Nuggets. It'll probably be that. Maybe it'll maybe it'll get up to five and a half. It'll probably well, open five and a half. And shout out to the the YouTube chat. YouTube.com sport slash sports gambling podcast. Uh, Moon off's in there. So I'm sure if there is a number, he's going to correct us shortly. But yeah, I, I mean, what, how, how do you, uh, I understand that, you know, ebbs and flows. How do you take the nuggets after watching that game? No. And, and really, I thought the nuggets, uh, I, I like nuggets plus five with the idea of, I mean, we saw the celebrations on the court. We saw them getting chippy. Like it did feel uh, for the Suns when they won that playoff series, monkey off our back, you know, smelling themselves, knocking LeBron James out. First time in NBA history is he lost in the first round of the playoffs. That's something to hang your hat on. It's easy to go uh, back game one, play flat, and they did a little bit in the first half, but you know, they were only down one, and then came out in the second half and really turned it on. Got their shooting going, played some tougher defense. I just don't see how uh, I'm kind of skeptical that they turn things around. I'd be interested to see what the series price is because maybe it can still get down on the Suns at a decent number. Dan, what's your what's your handle on uh, on this game two and and the series so far? Man, uh, so if this if this game opens up at five uh, to the to the Suns, I like the the Suns to take care of business. I think this is actually going to be a gentleman's sweep here. Yeah, uh, currently seeing. Uh, four to one to the Phoenix Suns at plus two forty. They just look really good, and you know Chris Paul didn't play particularly well against the Lakers. He always does this thing distributing the ball, but we, I think we saw in the fourth quarter why him and Devin Booker are the best backcourt to close out a game. And it's like Chris Paul just understands how to control the game's tempo. And honestly, with their defense, man, like they're just going to be really tough to to beat. And I don't think Denver has anything outside of the Jokic that's going to be enough to to stop this team. So they'll they'll probably get one game, uh, probably steal one at home. But otherwise, Phoenix should should take care of business and get to the Western Conference Finals here. Yeah, we were talking about this earlier, Sean. But it's pretty remarkable that like when Chris Paul came in the league, it was like a legit debate. Darren Williams, Chris Paul, and even Raymond Felton in there. Yeah. And to think like Darren Williams, it feels like he retired at least seven years ago. Like what happened it first? Probably was. It was about that. Eli won a Super Bowl or would Darren Williams played an NBA game? Well, we were hanging out watching that watching this game before we fired up the podcast. And I kept saying to Kramer, how has Chris Paul never even gotten to a conference finals? Like it just I know he can be a pain in the ass and there were some years where he was on bad teams, but like he's the primary ball handler. He's really good. How has he never gotten, you know, two playoff series wins into the conference finals? It just, it it rattles my brain. And we were actually at, I was, I was remembering this. uh, I was doing another guy's podcast, the uh, full slate podcast. And I was talking to, we were actually at that. uh, I was a, uh, it was game. Yeah. It was game uh, five. Where the the uh, Clippers were up huge against the Rockets, looking to close it out to get to the Western Conference Finals, and uh, you know they were the Rockets were like down twenty something. Harden was benched; he was just sitting on the sideline with a towel over his head. We thought we were going to see the Clippers move on to the Conference Finals, and they all time unraveling. Josh Smith going Jay off Smooth out of nowhere. Be- Jay Smooth. Best part about that, yep. the continuation of that story, Sean, is I was actually at Game Seven. Yeah, I was in the building. Uh, watching this like monumental collapse, and it, I mean that—that's—that's that's the answer to the question. That Clippers team should have brought him to a, at least one conference 
final. Should have. I mean, and who knows if he if he didn't pull his hamstring, you know, shouts to Munaf, he knows it well. I oh, mean, God, they yeah. had a chance of beating the Warriors before he he tore that or he messed up his hamstring. So, you know, I think it's just been a uh, a combination of opportunity, lack of opportunities with bad teams and just blowing it um and and, and injuries as well. So, this is what might be his best shot, man. If he could stay if his if his shoulders right enough, like I think they actually have a legitimate shot at getting into the championship. Cause one of the things I was thinking about was like what teams after we saw, I know we'll probably talk about the Nets, the Nets Milwaukee game next, but uh, at this point who can really stop the Nets? And when the way I looked at that Phoenix squad, the way that they have the offensive firepower, they have the floor general, they have people that can play defense. I think that that might be the best, the best matchup left uh, that could actually stop the Brooklyn Nets. But and, and honestly, tough, Chris, I, don't, I don't I don't see who's messing with them. And I want I would love to see Chris Paul put Kyrie in a body bag. Like I would, I, I, yeah, that's right? what I want to. That say. would be fun. Give me that right now. As far as the Phoenix game, yeah, minus five is fine. If you if you want to be a uh, a conservative fellow looking to retire <laughs> when they're sixty five, give me Phoenix. I, I'm pro- projecting Phoenix minus eleven. Phoenix minus eleven plus two hundred. Um, again, I, I, I saw no fight from this Denver team. They looked tired. Um, Phoenix looked energetic whenever they wanted to down the stretch of a playoff game. They got their shot. Chris Paul can still get his shot anytime he wants. And I just don't see Denver doing anything to stop it. Yeah, no, I, I'm with you. I, I'm just going to, I'm going to keep a conservative in the portfolio Phoenix minus five, but the energy that we saw to this Phoenix suns team late and the crowd was was going nuts. It's it, it feels like a new era of basketball. And and to Dan's point, the you know the Booker Chris Paul combination was really really fun. Um, I remember uh, when I was working on uh, the Gronk clip show that we had uh, we had Devin Booker as a guest when he was like nineteen. Uh, it was like uh, yeah, I don't know. He he just seemed like such a baby face kid. But man, that shot is just so pure, and he's a uh, he's an amazing scorer. And, yeah, their defense has been pretty solid as well, or or at least good enough to carry so, him. So. And they're working like everyone on the team is playing hard. So you you can tell when when someone you know they're really they they have a factor of buying in and getting to the nets yeah. where it's like the nets. <laughs> I, it's tough to critique them because they're just lighting people up. But the nets almost is like to me the net success. Um, and we'll get to them now. They, they are they're playing. What is this Thursday? Uh, Nets are catching three and a half in Milwaukee, plus one thirty on the money line for the Nets. Bucks minus one fifty five. The Nets are just playing like just shooting the ball really, really well. And and I get that's their game and whatever. I'm just saying the tenacity that we're seeing, the energy and like flow of the Suns is kind of long term what you would like to see out of a playoff team. And the Nets really haven't had to do that because they haven't they haven't really been tested that much. I mean, yeah, you know, the Celtics stole one away, but you could tell they were just kind of sleepwalking that one. And tough to not like the Nets going into Milwaukee. I mean, there's clearly something going on with Giannis. Again, he's get he. It looks like he has the yips at the free throw line. I mean, I was giving Ben Simmons so much uh, shit for his missed free throws, but Giannis, who was like really, uh, I think what like seventy percent in the regular he, season free throw percentage, he's just unraveled as well. I've seen that look. Before. Tell me they're not. Tell, tell me they're not much of the same person though. Ben yeah. Simmons and Giannis, they both can't shoot. You you game plan against them. You build up a wall. And then you just let them shoot. I'll be so happy if Giannis continues to pull up from that top of the key jump shot every time. He's <laughs> garbage, and he shows out. He always show, he never shows up in the playoffs, and it's going to continue to be the same story until they can actually. I don't know. I think like Coach Budenholzer or Budenhauser, how do you say his name? He never makes in-game adjustments. Like the Bucks just are going to be this team that will always be decent in the regular season and then just blow it in the playoffs. They're gonna. They're, I, I wouldn't be surprised if they get swept. Honestly, yeah. Like and how are they? How are they favorites in this? And, and Giannis is like, it. dude, play like a big man. Like seriously, what are you? What are you doing? Anytime you're shooting a jump shot, if I'm the Nets, I'm happy. Like really, what? Yep. I, and and you know, Joel kind of had a little bit of that in him in previous years, where it's like, okay, dude, I, I get it. You can hit some threes, but you got to understand, like you're you're goddamn unguardable in the paint. Like that's where you got to live. I. I I just don't get it. Um, settling for jump shots, and again, their their defense. I, I'm surprised how bad their defense has been. I thought they, I thought Drew Holiday would just, you know, 
not dominate, but at least be able to slow them down a little bit. This has just been a complete no show uh, for the, uh, so the, the, you're right. The supporting cast, man, Chris Middleton shooting 13 for 43 in two games. Like that's yeah. not going to get it done. So unless they start hitting some baskets, I mean, some, some credit must be due to the Brooklyn nets, their game planning. And they're, they're really playing lights out. Even their role players look like all stars right now, but they just got to play better. Maybe it'll change the landscape a little bit when they, they can catch one on their home turf, but I don't, I don't really see it happening. I think all the, the wind's been knocked out of their sails, man. Like the, the, the bucks look like they're dejected, defeated. No one can stop Kevin Durant and no one can stop Kyrie. So it's like, all right, well, what's the point of even playing at this point, man? They just look, they look at their loss, man. Oh, per- a perfect time to go home in front of the home crowd. Again, this is the playoffs. This is the <laughs> N- a nets team. Hmm, could never see them just being like, we got this in the bag, laying it, you know, bringing the foot off the accelerator a little bit. And then what do we see here? They go home, they get the game three bump. And, and the last thing I'll say, the last time the nets held a team to this few points, it was January. And so just from a regression back towards the nets are playing great. The bucks are playing horrible. I don't think this team's going to quit. That's the difference. I don't think they're going to quit. They're going to come home. They're going to get that bump from the crowd, from being at home. And you know, maybe it ends up being that gentleman's sweep for one, but this is the one they get. You think that this is the one they get again. Is this not, is this line, not the fishiest, like mm. stinky line again? When I saw it, I was like, no way, no way. I watched, I saw the first two games. What are they doing here? Again? I think, I think they, they know the nets are going to relax. Yeah. I, I don't know, man. I, I'm, I, think, I'm there, gonna, I think there's a certain now the fact that Harden is is out, I think weirdly has unlocked Kyrie and his scoring, and like him and Durant are on another level. You got Harris hitting threes, and as Munaf pointing out, Blake Griffin diving for loose balls, showing some tenacity. I mean, Blake Griffin <laughs> was hitting threes. What could possibly go wrong? Well, yeah, and I, and I think something could go wrong down the line. But I mean, th- that look in Giannis's eye is not a look I'm looking to back uh, at any point. Munaf also. Also, also pointing out that CP3 did get to the Western Conference Finals with the Rockets, and that's when he uh, when he his hammy gave uh, out on him. But it was like early in the series, so I don't think he got a he got like a full Conference Finals experience. He didn't qualify. Yeah, I'm not I'm not counting that for him. But, but Wentz Wentz did get the Super Bowl, right? Yes, because okay. they got home court advantage or home field advantage. I mean, you're no way. I love Nick Foles, but he wasn't going on the road. <laughs> two two Eagles tangents no. and one N- <laughs> NBA playoff. Show yeah, this come on. Yeah, well, right. If you're gonna throw Carson Wentz in there, one, I hate fucking Carson Wentz. Two, he still deserves that ring, and he helped me win two hundred thousand dollars. So I can only be so mad at the guy. Getting back to the Nets, though. Again, like the the. <laughs> in a weird way, Harden being out of the lineup has kind of helped the offense, uh, which sounds crazy, but just everyone else is shooting so well. Like they, the roles are more defined with no Harden in there. And since, you know, Harris Griffin are shooting so well and, and on top of Kyrie too. And then Durant's just been a, a monster as well. Their shooting is just too insane to take them to not take them as a dog. So give me the Nets plus three mm. and a half. Take the all blinders day off. That. Take the blinders. The off. blinders are off. I mean, I got the script in front of me right here. You, you want to talk about? Uh, I mean, off Gian- the top rope. Giannis needs to put some blinders on and just like look, you know, Kyrie's put some blinders on so he doesn't go outside the three point line and and just focus on the paint. Kyrie's got the razor blade like taped <laughs> to his wrist. He's gonna cut himself. Kyrie, uh, that guy's a that guy's an enigma. I can't, I can't unravel uh, Kyrie. All right, Sean. All right, shall we? Let's do it. Let's do a lock dog and something spicy. <laughs> that's the that's the new. Uh, I, I like that. The the new uh, instead something of spicy. instead of a tease. No one wants to play a a three team NBA tease in a four game slate. My lock. Give me the Suns minus five at home. Uh, Denver doesn't want any part of the Suns team right now. For my dog, I'm gonna do it. Give me uh, give me clips money line. That feels pretty good. Kramer got in my head a little bit with the uh, the Bucks maybe showing up at home. Uh, for my spicy play, I'm gonna co-sign Dan and I, I think a couple guys in the chat as well. Suns in five plus two forty. Mm. That feels. Real good, Kramer. Spicy almost. 
What do you got? Lock dog spicy. Uh, all right. I mean, I, I'm with you. I, I think there's a couple games you could lock up. Uh, let's. We haven't done a a, a double lock salute in mm. a long time. So let's uh, let's do it. Give me Phoenix minus five for my dog. Give me that Philly minus eleven plus two hundred. Oh, oh, oh. And uh, for something spicy, Utah wins game one. Clippers win series plus four hundred. Okay, Dan, what do you got for us? The lock. I'm going with the. Ah, gotta go, with Phoenix man. Uh, yeah. I gotta ride oh. with them. Oh, they look too this good. Is, has this my- happened all season, Sean? <laughs> A triple lock salute. <laughs> what could go wrong? <laughs> we won't blame you, Dan, if if, uh, if it crumbles. <laughs> um, so my dog, I'm going clips, uh, plus yep. three and a half. Let's go. And my spicy uh man, I'm gonna go clips in you know what? <laughs> yeah, I think I'm gonna go clips in six, man, plus three eighty. Okay. Because you also threw out clips in seven at five hundred. I, I like both. I those. did. I did. Yeah. I, I'm. I think I'm gonna. I think that the clips are gonna actually do make quicker, quicker work of uh, the Utah Jazz. They're just. I just don't believe in them. So like let me double it. down on that. I'm gonna. I'm gonna take it four and two. And you can actually, if, if I did the math right in my head, you can bet take both clips in six and seven for a better price than the minus one and a half games I mm. gave out. So. Shop around, fellas. Shop around, and ladies. And uh, speaking of shopping, you don't uh, head to the store, aka the App Store, Google Play Store. We can download the SGPN app. That's right, and maybe you can uh, win one thousand bucks. That's right. Sponsored by us because we're giving it back Wait, to the fans. They've you got to so buy much. an app in the App Store, and, and completely then how, free, and, right? Oh, it's free. Uh, and free. then how much does the contest cost? The contest is free. Oh, the Jesus. content is free. How do we do it? I don't even know. I crunch the numbers sometimes. It's not adding up, but thousand dollars. Uh, you click the contest tab. The contest is going to be closing uh, end of next week. So make sure you get your uh, NBA Finals prediction in. You got to pick the team, the number of games, and total points scored in the NBA Finals. But again, just SGPN, wherever great apps are downloaded, and also app reviews are available for Merch Monday. Uh, drawn winners. Every uh, Monday there, so ne- leave a, a nice review or a shitty review if you're a, if you're a real piece of shit, getting all angry about a free <laughs> app. You're not that kind of person, Uh-oh. so I'm not worried about. Oh it. no, no, we've only had positive reviews. Okay. Probably shouldn't I, have even put that, that out there. That, but that that sounded very personal. I, if it's I, happened already. Yeah, again, it's a total random drawing, but I, I I feel like your chances are way better with positivity. It's just good karma, and make sure you follow uh, Dan Titus on Twitter at Dan Titus. Check out all his uh, awesome articles over at sportsgamblingpodcast.com and the pods over on the NBA Gambling Podcast feed with. Moon off, Zach and RFB, aka Rich Fat Baby. Thank you for participating in the Sports Gambling Podcast. For the Sports Gambling Podcast, I'm Sean Stacking the Money Green, and he is Ryan. Just did the math. Huge overlay still in the one thousand dollar NBA Finals free roll. Kramer, let it ride.